Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlumiTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at acidic and basic buffers. Now these can be a little bit of a headache sometimes, um, they can be quite uh, difficult to understand but hopefully after watching this video you should have a little bit more of a clearer idea of how these things work and, uh, and why they're actually really useful because they're used in such a large area, um, even in your own blood um, there's buffer solutions. So, and we're just going to have a look at the definition first. I'm going to show you what an acidic buffer is and a basic buffer, uh, and basically show you how they work um, in terms of the chemical equations that I've got on the board. So a buffer, the definition of a buffer is basically a solution that resists a change in pH uh, when small amounts of acid or alkali are added to it. So, and the key words here are resists and small. Um, it doesn't actually, a buffer doesn't actually stop the pH from uh, changing, it actually just slows it down, it resists it, um, and it only does that if a small amount of acid or alkali is added. Buffers can't cope when you throw large amounts of acid or alkali in there and it, it just doesn't work. So it is restricted to certain criteria, but you do have to know the definition, it's so, so important, and actually understanding the definition also helps you to work out um, chemically what's happening to a buffer. So there's two ways in which you can make a buffer. So um, the first one is an acidic buffer. Um, and these obviously keep um, a pH within the acidic range. That's what acidic buffers do. So um, to make an acidic buffer, you need a weak acid. So ethanoic acid, methanoic acid, anything like that, carboxylic acid, uh, and it's salt. Normally, it's like a sodium version uh, of the acid. So sodium methanoate, for example, would be the salt for ethanoic acid. Um, and a basic buffer is basically made from a weak base and its salt, so a bit like the acid one, um, but using a weak base. And commonly it's ammonia, and um, that's your weak base, and the salt would be something like ammonium chloride. So um, these are the two different types of buffers that you can have. Um, and an acidic buffer uh, basically tries to um, keep a substance at an acidic pH, so anything below 7, and obviously a basic buffer keeps things um, in anything above pH 7. So they have uses and it depends on um, what the use is. So for example, for shampoos, you would have a basic buffer because shampoos need to be slightly alkaline. Um, so we're going to have a look at this first. I'm going to show you in two equations to show you what's happening. But these two equations are very strongly linked together and you should see them as a pair rather than as individual equations. So Here's our um, acidic buffer. Remember the definition we said it's a weak acid and it's salt. So we've got two equations showing that. So we've got the weak acid equation, which is up here. So this is ethanoic acid. And ethanoic acid um, will dissociate uh, to form ethanoate ions and H plus ions. Um, and if we have to write down the relative concentrations of this, we can say that actually because this is a weak acid, it dissociates very poorly. So it doesn't break up uh, into its ions very readily. So we can say in terms of the concentration, so we'll do this in green so you can see the difference. So we have a high concentration of um, ethanoic acid, and we have low amounts of ethanoate and a low amount of H+. And that's because it doesn't dissociate fully. If we look at the salt, though, um, and let's say we take the salt of ethanoic acid. So in this case, I've picked sodium ethanoate. It could be potassium ethanoate, um, could be lithium ethanoate, it doesn't really matter. Um, but sodium ethanoate is the most common form that you could use. Um, now, this salt, uh, when we dissolve it in water, obviously all these things are in solution, that's what the buffers are, they're in solution. And um, this breaks up readily. Most salts dissolve very readily within water, uh, and so therefore this will break up into its ions very readily. So in terms of um, this, we have low amounts of salt, and we have high amounts of this, which is your ethanoate ion, which is similar, which is the same as what was produced in our acid, and we have high amounts of sodium ions as well. Now, these two are mixed together, and when we mix them together, we actually form a buffer solution. So, um, these two are actually being thrown into a beaker, and they actually exist together, even though we've written them out as two separate equations. So, basically, a buffer is something that resists a change in pH when small amounts of acid or alkali are added. So that's what we're going to find out. We're going to find out what happens when we add a small amount of acid and a small amount of alkali. And we're going to explain this in terms of equilibrium. So if we add an acid, so an acid is obviously H+, so we're going to write this in this colour. So acids are H+. So if we add an acid to this here, the H plus ion is actually 
um, going to react with your um, ethanoate ions, which are over here. Now, you can see that we have a large amount of ethanoate ions, which is here, and we have a small amount here, but that doesn't matter because they're all in the same beaker, remember. So the H plus will actually react with your ethanoic ions, and it will produce um, this, which is ethanoic acid. So by adding an acid, um, this actually effectively reacts with this to produce that. So we're absorbing or using up the H plus ions that we've just added in. So the H plus ions, they will react. They will react with a CH3, COO minus, uh, and then equilibrium uh, will actually shift to the left. So I'm going to put now we'll put in left. So equilibrium will shift to the left um, to produce more ethanoic acid ions. So because we have a high concentration of that, then um, this will effectively um, allow H plus ions to be reacted. So that's a good thing. That's why the salt is there. So when you add an acid, you have a large amount of ethano ethanoic ions to produce ethanoic acid. Now, if we add an alkali, alkalis are um, obviously um, hydroxide ions, so OH minus ions. Now, OH minus ions will react with positive um, molecules or positive parts. So you can see we've got a large amount of sodium there, um, but if the hydroxide ion reacted with sodium, um, it would just break up and form sodium hydroxide again, again because it's really soluble. So the hydroxide ion does react with sodium, but uh, it actually doesn't play any role in terms of the buffer action. So what does play a role is the H plus ion. So this, the hydroxide, actually reacts with, um, with the H plus ion over here. Now you can see we've got a bit of a problem because we don't have a large amount of H plus ion. So the amount of hydroxide and would easily overwhelm the amount of H plus ions that we've got here. But luckily, we have a high amount of this, which is ethanoic acid. And so what happens is when the OH minus reacts with your H plus ions, the ethanoic acid dissociates to replace them H plus ions back again. So OH minus reacts with H plus, and the equilibrium will actually shift to the right. Um, because the OH minus will react with your H pluses, which are over here, and this will break up or dissociate to form them back again. So according to the Chatelier's principle, um, if we remove or if we alter the amount of H plus ions on there, then equilibrium will shift to try and oppose that change. So in other words, it'll shift to the right to put them back again. So that's what happens when we add a hydroxide on there. So that's basically how that works for an acidic buffer. And it's really, really similar for a basic buffer as well. Um, so for a basic buffer, we've got ammonia and we've got water. Um, and these two will react together to form ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. Now, the, um, this is your, obviously, this is your uh, weak base, so, um, which reacts to form that. And we need its salt. And so its salt would be ammonium chloride. Again, it could be ammonium bromide, ammonium iodide. It could be, it could be anything. But this is the most common salt that you could make from ammonia. So ammonium chloride, and again, this dissociates fully uh, to form ammonium and chloride ions. So just like what we've done up here, we're going to write down our concentrations. So we have, this is a weak base, so it doesn't dissociate very well. So we actually have a high amount of these two. Um, the water is just there as well. Um, I'll put high on there as well. So you have a large amount of that. Um, and you'll actually have low amounts of ammonia, of ammonium, and low amounts of hydroxide. Uh, on this side, ammonium chloride um, is the salt. Um, salts dissociate readily when they're in solution, so you won't have a large concentration of that. So we're going to put low there. And because it dissociates quite readily, obviously we're going to produce high amounts of the ions that it breaks up into because it dissociates free. Now, if we do a test on these, so if we add an acid and alkali, we need to work out what's actually going on. So if we add an acid, now again, acid is H+. Plus. These two are mixed together in the same beaker. So if you imagine these two are completely mixed and we have all these ions floating around in the same beaker. If we add an acid, which is H+, plus, um, the acid will actually um, react um, with something that's negatively charged. Uh, and in this case, it will react with the, the OH uh, minus. Uh, again, if it reacted with the Cl minus, 
um, it would produce HCl, which again dissociates as being a, an acid that will dissociate freely and just reform H plus and Cl minus back again. So instead, what happens is the H plus reacts with the OH minus. So put that there. Reacts with the OH minus. And when it does that, obviously we don't have a high concentration of this. So what actually happens is it reacts with the OH minus, but this, because we have high amounts of these two here, these two will react to try and replace the OH minuses that the H plus has just reacted. So again, according to the Schrodinger's principle, equilibrium will shift to the right. And so that is what we're going to put on there. Equilibrium shifts to the right to replace the hydroxide ions that your H plus has added. Obviously, if you run out of these two, if you add that much acid that you run out of these two, then eventually, obviously, you will have uh, more H plus ions than, um, than it can cope with and the buffer just breaks. So that's why it's only small amounts. Uh, and the last step is when you add alkali. Now, alkali is OH minus. So OH minus will react with something that's positively charged. In this case, the only species that we've got that are positively charged is ammonium ions. And you can see we have high amounts of ammonium ions, and we've got this as just the same. So these are in the same beaker. The whole thing's in the same beaker. So we have high amounts of ammonium. So that reacts to your OH minus, reacts with NH4 plus, which goes on there. Um, and as you can see, um, when you add your alkali, the equilibrium will actually shift backwards to the left. So when the OH minus reacts with NH4 plus, what you form is NH3 and H2O. So it will react back over to this side on this top equation here. So equilibrium will actually shift to the left to oppose that change, what you've done to it. Now, that is effectively um, all buffers, that's all buffers are. And they are kind of, they can be quite complicated, like I say, but think of it logically. And if you write down the two equations, you, you can easily see um, how these things work. Um, and it is all to do with concentrations of your weak acid um, and, the, and its salt and the weak base and its salt. And if you write them out separately like that, write out your concentrations of each of your species, um, and then you should be able to work it out relatively easily. Um, but I hope that helps. That's it. Bye.